we're going to uh, do a series of videos explaining the, the scriptures or making the scriptures more clear. We're going to start with uh, uh, the time between when Adam was placed here on the earth and Peleg divided the earth for this segment. Uh, uh, first I'd like to start with some facts so that we're all on the same page. Uh, the facts are nothing more than uh, things from the, from the scriptures. First of all, we need to understand who is the God of this world at this time. It's Satan. Satan is the God of this physical world. That's his realm, the physical realm. The tinsel and glitter, the new cars, the new homes, the new clothes, all that stuff. A probation, as mentioned in the scriptures, or immortality, is a time from Adam to Christ, or about 6,000 years. A kingdom, it talks about kingdoms. We are in a kingdom now. We were always in a kingdom. God is in a kingdom. We move from kingdom to kingdom as we grow in light or lose light. A kingdom is nothing but a, a, a part of the eternal law that we can live with that, in that particular kingdom. As we move up in kingdoms, we learn more of the eternal law and become more responsible. Kingdoms are just levels of eternal or natural law. There is no place, as Joseph told us in the Doctrine and Covenants, no place in the whole universe there isn't a kingdom. Kingdoms are everywhere. There's no space between them. They can t that's part of the eternal law. Next, this is the Promised Land, the United States of America. The Book of Mormon explains that, and Joseph explained it when Adam was brought forth out of the Garden of Eden back in the uh, uh, eastward in the land of Eden. The United States was the land of Eden, was, was part of, of Canada. Adam's family lived here in the Promised Land for 1,657 years before the flood. That's a lot of time, 1,657 years. The, the, the royal blood, or Adam, the seed of the Most High God, lived here in the Promised Land. This is the inheritance for the sons and daughters of the Most High God, for the royal seed. And this is, a, at the time of the, the flood, there were several billion people living here in the Promised Land. We had 1,657 years. We ended up with just a remnant. They were so the, the people were so unrighteous that we we lost several billion people. A remnant was saved from the flood by the ark, and they were banished to Babylon. We were banished from the promised land. The coming gathering of Israel will be the house of Israel or the royal blood coming out of Babylon back to this the promised land the first inheritance for the royal seed of God. Another, another thing that uh, is not commonly known, I suppose, is there are eight families here in the world. When when uh, a remnant at the time of Noah was saved from the flood, it wasn't eight people, it was eight families. A remnant of the righteous of eight families were taken to Babylon because God did not lose any of the families of this earth. Okay, some of the uh, two of the things that we need to learn while we're here in the mortal world is who we are, our purpose of creation, and who God is and God's purpose of creation. And we're going to talk about who we are during this segment and re related to the time between uh, when Adam was placed on the earth and Peleg divided. Now the earth looks something like this for the first uh, 1,856 years. It, there was four corners, or four lands, surrounded by water. Uh, Eden was one of them, uh, Ethiopia, Assyria, and Havilah. Each of them had a river running from the Mount of Eden, where the ground was watered with a mist, and the garden was just below the Mount of Eden, and from that mist ran four different rivers, and they were named in the scriptures. The lands were named in the scriptures, and 
Eden was named in the scriptures as the place of the garden, eastward Eden. Now there was a Zion in Eden, uh, a, a place for the, the refuge of the royal blood, and there's also a Zion in Ethiopia. And that's a decoy Zion. It's called Israel. Israel is a, is a place for the gathering of the dukes of Esau, not the the, the children of uh, Ish, of uh, Israel. The, pl the place for the gathering of Israel is right here. This is our first home. 1,656 years of it. Now I want to talk about our mortal being and what's inside this mortal being. When, when we were uh, in the pre-mortal dimension prior to coming here, that's where we were created by God from energies that came together negative and positive or male and female energy that's what that's what is the whole universe is full of is energy there's nothing else all energy and everything that we see or, or hear about is made from a male and female energy the internet has two things a zero to one God's uh, uh, creations are made of two things male and female essence the, the internet and things like that are, are, are decoys to keep us from understanding what is going on. There are three types of energies. We have a negative energy, a positive energy, and a neutral energy. The neutral energies are energies at rest. If we look out in a, in a daytime or at night, we see the space between uh, us and the sun and the moon and the, and the stars. That's really not space. That's where the neutral energies are. They're at rest. They're asleep. And they're, they can't be bothered by active energies because they're not in the same plane. It appears to us there's space, but it's not as full. There's no place in the universe that isn't full of either uh, active positive and negative energies or sleeping neutral energy. One thing we need to understand is there was no creation as we think about it. The universe has no beginning and thus will have no end. The universe was never created. It's always been. The energies that make up the universe have always been. Now the energies change form because when we're put together, we're, we're made of male and female energies in various combinations, uh, but we're still energy. That's our essence, that's, that's our being, that's our spirit that's within this mortal body. The mortal body is not made of energy. It's made of McDonald's hamburgers, French fries, and pizza. And as thus, we have a creation date, whereas the universe doesn't because it's always existed. The creation date is when our immortal father and immortal mother put us together in the form that our essence is now. Now, before we came here, before we moved from the pre-mortal dimension or existence, because the essence that is us is kind of like a fog, a mist. It's not solid like these bodies or piece of wood. Uh, and so our immortal parents, our mother, immortal mother and immortal father, also made or created or organized an immortal uh, tabernacle to house our immortal essence. So before we came here, our mortal essence, which came to this, you know, each of these bodies, had also an immortal tabernacle. But when we left the pre-mortal dimension, we had to lay that body down. We laid it down to sleep because it is mortal. It doesn't need uh, food to maintain itself, and it, can, and it can last forever in that state as we can. One thing, another thing we need to understand, this world that we're on will either grow and grow in light until it becomes a urine femme, or the light will go out and it will be disorganized. The same as for us. The earth is a living thing, the same as we are. All of the things we see in the heavens at night are living things with essences. The stones have an essence. Uh, a tree, uh, plants, flowers, elephants, horses, they all have an essence. And they're all in a, very, in a kingdom where they're learning various things in their particular realm. 
So, to make it clear, energy is neither created nor destroyed. It, like matter, just changes form. One of the ways that the energies are made, or not one of the ways, the only way, is we, we live in a galaxy, which I'm sure your way I was called the Milky Way galaxy. It's basically like two plates, a negative side and a positive side, although both sides have negative and positive, just that one is more prone to the negative than one is more prone to the positive. And they're turning, and as they turn, the negative goes by the positive and relieves energy. It doesn't create it because energy is not created. It just relieves the energy that was there. And while it does that, it also creates a field, much like our electric motors and electric generators here on Earth. And in that field, it envelops all the galaxy, and that's what feeds our essence. It doesn't feed it, it's our essence is part of it. Because our essence doesn't eat, think, doesn't eat. It's just part of the energy scheme that was produced by our particular galaxy through the movement of the two plates, negative passing positive. One thing we need to do with this essence is it's overpowered by this mortal body, because the mortal body has a lot of things it wants to do. It loves sex, it loves killing things, it loves all kinds of uh, physical things. It likes new cars, new boats, new houses, you know, new clothes, good foods. Um, but we need to learn that the essence is the one that's going to take us through the eternal worlds without end. This mortal body is going to come to an end and go back to the dust from which it came. I'd like to talk a little bit about the resurrection, because that deals with the energies. We know, we, we read of the Christ resurrection, where he uh, was crucified, and then three and a half days later, he returned to his mortal body, uh, which had been fixed up a bit from, the, from when he had been crucified, and has a greater, greater capacity than we have, although it's still a mortal body. Uh, where we have the possibility of being uh, resurrected several times. Let me explain that. When we come the first time to one of these mortal bodies, our, our parents, our mortal parents, did a similar act as that our, our immortal parents did. They came together, fertilized the seed, that seed grew into a uh, body inside of the mother, and when it was full term and ready to come, we, the essence that was slated for that particular body, came, and as it emerged from the mother, our essence went into body. Now that was our, if you call it a resurrection, because we came from an immortal tabernacle and went into a mortal body, a new mortal body. That would be a form of resurrection. Now, if we're here for 10, 20, 30, or 100 years, and we uh, this mortal body dies and goes back to dust, we go to a post-mortal post judgment and we decide or th that we like to learn more. God allows us, under certain circumstances, to return to an earth through a mortal mother and the same thing would happen. The essence comes to the body as it emerges from the mother and that would be a form of the resurrection. So we've got a new body. Now the last resurrection that we'll probably experience in this mortal realm or mortal realm is when we uh, finally have come to the point that we are either figure we've learned as much as we can here or we prove that we can't learn anything and we go back and pick up our immortal tabernacle and then we go to our final judgment. That would be a resurrection because we come back into in a mortal tabernacle. And I talk about education here in the mortal world. We have God's uh, law presented to us through the scriptures and through the holy prophets. And we have man's uh, law or man's education given to us through Satan and his boys. Um, if we want to be successful in the moral world, we need to uh, 
spend every moment learning the, the things of man. And at the end of our 68 or 100 years, we will probably have a nice car, nice house, nice clothes, nice family, go to church every Sunday. Uh, but have we succeeded at what we came here for? No, because we just learned what Satan wanted us to learn. If we spend the same amount of time learning the laws of God and living them, we wouldn't need these automobiles because God's law, if you get totally familiar with it, he, God can move from this world to the moon, to planet, push like that. He doesn't need a car, truck, or bus. And if we could spend as much time thinking about those things, then we would be building a, a serious amount of information in our essence. The essence is what is going to take us from this world to other worlds, to worlds without end. Remember, this bird, if, we, if successful, will be around for a very, 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 very long time. And what are we going to be doing during that time? We're going to be working with our God, with other worlds and other peoples. The same thing has been happening prior to us coming here. Now, what happens when we spend all our time learning man stuff? We get to the point that we think right is wrong and wrong is right. And that's where we're at today. Uh, that's why the, 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 the people were wiped out the time of Noah. They got to the point that they thought right is wrong and wrong is right. And they started depending on man's education, man's pills, man's medicine, man's law. That's when we start to get the idea that right is wrong and wrong is right. And then we dismiss all of the former laws that the prophets gave us. Because that was another time, other people. They didn't have refrigeration. How in the crap could they have done anything? We're smarter now. We have brand new suits. We drive in nice cars. We have nice houses. So obviously we're smarter. That's when we got to thinking right is wrong and wrong is right. Which leads us to the problem uh, that God has is he can, when we get to the point where we think right is wrong and wrong is right, he cannot send any more of his righteous children because the minute they get here we, we give them a, a brainwashing into Satan's rules. Law. That's, if we go back and look at the cleansing of Noah at the time uh, the people have been here almost 2,000 years and have got to the point where they thought right is wrong, wrong is right. The, the, the promised land, which is here in Eden, <coughs> was, was uh, cleansed with a flood. They figured there was about 5 billion people here on the earth at that time because they were around for almost 2,000 years. Got lots of time to populate. Well, there was only a few people saved on the ark. The rest drowned. The billions and billions drowned. Why? Because they thought right is wrong and wrong is right and they followed the good times of Satan, the physical life. Actually, there was about the scriptures say there was eight people saved, which is not true. There were eight families saved. You now the eight families, about a thousand people that were on the ark, that were banished from the promised land and went over to the Gentiles uh, in Babylon. Now we had another cleansing, which is mentioned in the Book of Mormon. Remember when Nephi, Lehi, came to this, the promised land, about 600 B.C. And about 600 years later, about the time of Christ, or exactly at the time of Christ, the Nephites had got to the point where they thought right is wrong and wrong is right. They're very wealthy, all kinds of fine clothes and fancy, fancy this and fancy that. Uh, and they got right for a cleansing just like Noah's people did. Well, during the three and a half days that Christ's body was in the tomb, this area, the promised land, was being cleansed. And it was this was a different type. It wasn't a water. This was a destruction type cleanse where earthquakes and mountains rose, mountains sank, cities burned, cities fell into the sea. Uh, and of the, they figured there was maybe 30 million people, uh, the universities in Utah, uh, should have been more, but remember from the day one 
the children of Lehi were killing each other. And they spent the whole 600 years prior killing each other. Matter of fact, they, they lived, those that lived uh, then created more people, and 400 years later, they still were killing each other to the point that the Nephites were totally wiped out in the land of Gomorrah. So when Christ came over here to visit and minister after his resurrection, he ran into about 2,500 people in, in the Promised Land, in the heart of the Promised Land. And he taught and ministered to those. But it was down from 30 million. So a lot of them were laying dead all over the place. Now the next day, a few more came. So we had about 3,000 saved out of 30 million people because of they thought good, they thought right was wrong and wrong was right. Now getting back to the time of Noah uh, and the land, remember, before Pele, the land had four pieces all connected, surrounded by water. There was the land of Eden, the land of Havilah, the land of Assyria, the land of Ethiopia. There was a, a mountain, Eden, in the center, which was watered with a mist, and that mist turned into four rivers that went to the four lands. Garden of Eden was located just west of the Mount of, of Eden. When when Noah brought the remnant, righteous remnant from the promised land to the Gentiles, he landed somewhere around in this area here. And uh, the land still looked that way. So, from two, a couple hundred years later, we have a prophet called Peleg. And his job was to divide the lands uh, as, we kind of, as we see them today. Uh, and it was in about 1800 A.G., or 1800 years after the Garden. That's what Peleg did. He divided the lands. Well, what happens? He also moved them about 90 degrees. The water stayed in one place. The lands moved. When they stopped, the water then rushed back across the land, which cleansed the land, also baptized the land. Uh, and... and uh, wiped out just about everything except a, uh, a remnant that was saved prior to the, the Nephites, like the remnant of the re Nephites. Now at the same time this moved 90 degrees, it also opened up a conduit to outer space, to, to absolute zero. And we had a part of the land frozen. Now the, the animals and beasts that were in the semi-tropics were then moved immediately because when the land shifted to up to the near the North Pole and the South Pole. And they were instantly frozen because that was the beginning of the Ice Age. So about 1800 years after Adam we had the Ice Age. And we're still seeing the, the recession of the Ice Age. Uh, it's not global warming, it's just the Ice Age receding. I spent a lot of time in Alaska, a lot of time. Dug up lots of the frozen animals that still had stuff in their, in their stomach, green stuff. They were frozen instantly while they were feeding down in the sub, sub, uh, tropical type of, uh, of uh, environment. We dug up a head of a saber tooth tiger was almost as big as a small Volkswagen. So going on, that was the beginning of the Ice Age. We're still experiencing today. We think it's global warming. There's nothing more than it. But we do have another thing. We're starting to move back to where we were. Uh, I do a lot of surveying because we do a lot of claim work with the federal government for, for mining claims. And our North Pole, as last time we looked at the topo maps, has moved 17 degrees. We're 17 degrees off. We're about ready to flip again, which will happen because all things will be restored as they were during the time of, of Christ's reign here. We'll go back to this situation here from the situation we got now preparing for another mortality. I'd like to end with this thought. Success mortally is education, home, car, boat, clothes, real estate. Success spiritually is eternal life on worlds without end. One more time. Worlds without end. Worlds without end. That means we're going to be on other worlds working with God with other people. 
just like we were here. The same thing. The same program for all people. It just starts again. This thing for our world, or this plan for our world, will start again. Right now we're going through a thousand. We're going to go through a thousand years of Christ's reign, and then we'll have 3,500 years to clean things up from our mess we made for this last 7,000 years, and it'll start again with putting a new Adam on the earth. Thank you. Next time we're going to have a program on uh, God and the, and God's purpose of creation. Thank you very much.